No, you haven't tuned into Old Guy Cook. This is the Old Guy Geek. I've come out of my man cave where most all my computers and everything. I come in here to the real world in the kitchen. And what we're going to do is go through the Bing food and drink application and show you all the great features, how you can have meal planning, find recipes, create shopping lists, and do all those kinds of things. But then we're going to come back here and show you how modern technology, namely a tablet or a laptop, can replace the traditional cookbook or recipe. So stay tuned for the end of the video, so we'll come back then. So let's take a look at the new Bing food and drink application. Now what I mean by application is this is another Bing application. In other words, it uses the search engine underneath. It's basically a browser specialized for a certain subject. And if you look here, uh, it's organized into different sections that you can browse through and just take a look at that way. But if you go back to the home area, the home screen, uh, if you click anywhere on the screen, right click, you see you have the sections just like any other Bing application up here that you can browse through there. But for the purpose of today, I'm not going to use that, that particular interface. They have built one on the side over here, and there's one called uh, different things. Now, collections is a nice little thing that you can name anything a collection. It doesn't have to be. I created one called dinner here, uh, and it explains here how you get started with collections and what they are. Uh, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and blow past that and uh, just get down to using the application. But feel free to go ahead and investigate it on your own. All the new Bing applications have a walkthrough to help you uh, understand how to use them and everything. But uh, anyways, I created a new collection called Dinner, and there's nothing there. But I'm going to go ahead and do a search for uh, any type of food here, uh, any kind of thing that I'm interested in. It could be a drink, but I'm going to put in steak. Now it comes with a list of things that they have already in there, and I'm going to use the steak and wild mushroom uh, thing here. Uh, I'm going to take a look at that and see what comes up. So I hit enter, and it comes up with a recipe for the steak and wild mushroom pie. Not exactly what I'm looking for, but we'll use it for purposes of demonstration. Now you can say add this to collection, add to your meal planner, uh, or skip over hands-free mode for a second and add a shopping cart. So if we sit there and say collection, I can create a new one, or I can add that to that dinner one that I had, and it says it was added. Add it to meal planner, okay, you can select a day of what meal you want to plan this for, and select Friday, or whatever day you want, and you know, all you have to do is click on add, and it's added to your meal planner. And then, of course, then you can say add a shopping cart. Now, what's really interesting about adding the shopping cart, uh, we're going to go ahead and take a look at that. You can select the recipe items are listed from the recipe here to your shopping cart list. And all you have to do is look down and say, oh, I already have this or I need this. So you can right-click and or actually click and take things off. I already have pepper. I already have flour, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, and come up with a list of things that you want to have added to your shopping cart because you found this yummy recipe that you want to make and everything. So we'll go ahead and uh, unselect those and look around. Okay, I got butter and I got an egg. So we're all done. We've selected the ones we want for the recipe. We say add selected items. And as you can see, it says that they were added to the shopping cart. And we'll take a look at that in a minute. Uh, first, we're going to back on out of here a little bit, and we're going to go look at the dinner collection that we have. You can see that the steak and wild mushroom pie was added to the dinner collection, and there it is again. Now, if you go back, you can see there's a list of your collections, and then the dinner has one item in it. Now, you can add on different collections. You can do any kind of group. You could put, like, all wines together, or you could put it however you want to arrange your stuff. I'm doing it by breakfast, lunch, and dinner, so I'm going to go ahead and put a breakfast in here and simply enter it in and say, now I have a breakfast one. Now, if we go back to the main menu, you can see now that we can do different things here, but let's look. So there's a shopping list. It's got five items now. If we look at today's meal planner, now we see that Friday has the steak and wild mushroom pie added to that. Now, if I want to have that for dinner, I don't have all the ingredients, if we remember, so I have to go buy those things. So in order to do that, I'm going to go back over here, to the uh, back to the higher level menu, and go to the shopping list. And sure enough, there's the recipe, and there's the things I decided I needed to go buy. Now, I can click on print down here, and it'll print all these up to a list, and I can go shopping using that list. Now, steak and mushroom pie is the only item I'm going to have. So what do I want to do about that? Well, I can go back and I can search for any other product. I have uh, the chili here on this, this page here. Okay, I could use that. Uh, or I can do a search up here uh, using the search functionality built in. And I simply would type in a search term. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and, uh, you know, I'll just go click on this recipe instead. And here's the pumpkin chili recipe. Uh, it's a... Uh, Really nice. I got all these ingredients again over here. Again, I say I want to add to the collection or meal planner or to my shopping list. So I use the same functionality as you saw before. I can unselect all. I can go ahead and add them to the shopping list however I want to do. 
So I would do this, and you'd have like a main entree, a dessert, and all that. You just simply go through the things, add these recipes, find your ingredients, and come up with your shopping list. You can scroll through Bing. You can do anything you want to to, to do that kind of thing. So uh, you can go to the sections up here, and I go to recipes, and I'm going to say, you know what, I uh, I can search by cooking method. I can say, oh, I want to, oh, I want a barbecue, okay. Uh, and then I want to go take a look at, the, once it comes up, I want to take a look at uh, what kind of cuisine. Okay, I want uh, uh, dinner, okay. Uh, and then I want to go here and say American, okay, American barbecue, okay, dietary restrictions, low carb. Okay, and this particular one, I found one thing, and that's some lamb with rosemary, uh, which I hate. But anyways, the point of it is that you can narrow your search using these search functions, much as you do at a shopping site. Uh, and if you take them back off by simply clicking on the X to remove that uh, search functionality and go search for different things, maybe by ingredients. I want to see, oh, I feel like having uh, some uh, turkey, roasted turkey. So no matter how you do it, you simply uh, use your ingredients. Uh, uh, I want to do it by occasion. Uh, however I want, I can find different things. How easy it is to fix. Uh, and you can come up with some quick things or some uh, other things to, to do. So that's how you use your browsing and your recipes. So one of the features I like is that besides being able to go buy different types of uh, food, you can uh, even have gluten-free for the gluten-free people out there, is that if you scroll to the, lo to the right a little bit, there's different ways you can browse. You can browse by uh, culture, chefs, and all that. But what I really like is this tips and techniques. Uh, I stumbled upon this, and if you click on uh, one of these to see how, uh, how to fix something, okay, it actually comes up with, there's the thing you want to learn about. It explains what's going on. You hit the slideshow, and it steps you through the preparation for making gravy. Uh, no more pulling out the cookbook. It's all right here for you to uh, figure out uh, how to do things. And especially since I'm a go guy geek, not old guy cook, uh, I can use this section a lot. Now, going on, you can sit there and do it by different culture. You can click on these articles here, and there's more food culture there at the bottom, uh, different things. If you know who these chefs are, or if you have a favorite chef, you can search for them and everything, and they'll come up with recipes by those chefs, for example, and everything. Uh, so there's all these sections you can do uh, different, uh, different things with. Now, if we go over a little bit further, we'll come over here to the wine section, which I'm sure everybody's interested in. Now, if you can browse by certain recommendations they have here or different things, but you can just click on and browse wine. You can do this just like you did recipes. You can, there's different categories you can search, you know, uh, types of wine. You can sit there and say, oh, I want to click by region, and that's mainly by country. You can click on USA, for example. If you want to search more, uh, more specifically, you can just use the uh, search feature. Matter of fact, if you just click up here and let's say let's type in California, uh, and you'll see a list comes up, we'll say California wines, and there's a list. And you can there's a first list, and you can see more later on, and you can uh, take a look at all those in more detail. But you can click here and say type, I want a red tonight, you know, and it'll come up with all the red wines. Give you the points and everything. Really nice way to search for your wine selection. So if I collect the, the variety and everything, I look here, and it gives me, and let, let's clear the red here first uh, so that we get all the different types of wines and everything. So you're searching for something to complement your dinner with. Now, this isn't the way to really define it. We'll show that in a minute. But let's say I want to scroll down here, and I decide I want to, uh, now let's stay with this, and I want to go find a particular type of wine that I like, Pinot Grigio. Okay, so we look here, and there they are. Or I clear that, and I say, oh, I like a uh, Pinot Noir. Okay, and there we are there. So you can sit there and examine your wine and to take a look exactly at it. It gives you all the detail you need to know about this particular one, the years of release. You know, it has asterisks next to the good years and everything, how much the usual cost is, the points. Uh, it's all provided from a database system uh, and everything. It tells you exactly uh, what's going on and everything, well-reviewed or not. Okay, and you can click on different years. And then it tells you the drinking window of what you should have and everything. And my wife's going to really use this application. So uh, you can browse through uh, different reviews from different people and everything, and you can add your own review. 
And you even, by the way, have other wines from that winery that you can take a look at it too, if you happen to like that winery and everything. So if I say I want to add this to the meal planner or to the collection, I simply click there, and it'll add that to the meal. And I can select which meal it is. Oh, let's say Thursday. I say add, and it's been added to my meal planner. And if you have something else on your meal planner for that day, it'll show up with it. So if we go back a little bit here, uh, and I actually use this interface up here, uh, there's the meal planner, and there's the uh, wine that we selected underneath Thursday. Now, you can't drag and drop them there. I wish you could do that to move them between Friday and all that, but you can't do that. But you can stack them in order. Now, you can go ahead and edit it, but you can simply click and delete there to change your meal planner and all that stuff. You can go back and look at your wine again, and just go back to your meal planner. Go back and forth and figure out what you want to have here. Now, we, we, let's go back and take a look at some of the, the other sections. And we'll go over here to the uh cocktails and, and guess what exactly the same functionality you can go in here and say oh the, the, by difficulty by type and what we got so let's go again my wife would like a minty so we'll take a look at that and uh you can by the type of glass and everything i suppose you know what the hell you can do that too or major ingredients okay you can say uh let's say rum and there you go and look what i found i found a mojito so if we click on the mojito uh, we can go see how to mix it. it tells you exactly what to do what kind of glass to use if you want and each step in the order of how to how to do it and again you want to add that to your meal planner you click there there's my thursday meal planner it's added to my meal planner uh, by the way, I need some of this stuff, so if I click on the shopping list, sure enough, just like the recipe, I say, oh, I don't have this, I don't have that. I need to uh, click on certain things to remove them and say, add them to my uh, shopping list. So uh, now we have our meal and we have our uh, drink stuff that we need there in the shopping list. Now we have the steak and mushroom and the mojito ingredients there. Now, I've been talking about your daily stuff. You can print it or clear it all up and everything, and that's your shopping list for that day and everything. But what you really might want to do is plan for an occasion like Christmas or something because uh, Christmas is eventually coming up. Some people plan well in advance. So you can click on the different sections and do that. But first, what you may want to do is uh, create a collection for it. So let's click on the collection, and we're going to add a new collection. Okay, we're going to say it's Christmas. Again, this is different uh, than the idea of doing it for a daily meal, dinner, or anything like that. So let's say Christmas dinner. I want to prepare all the ingredients for that. So if I go back here now and I want to go ahead and take a look at uh, uh, something I want to add to it. I'm saying let's go to recipes. And we go down here and we go to the special occasions and up here to Christmas. And I say, okay, I want to add some, uh, some items to that collection. So if I click on an item and I say, okay, there it is. So I come down here to my uh, collection, and I can choose which collection. I say, oh, I want to add it to that collection. And again, add it to shopping list and all that stuff. And go da 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 And decide what I want and say add selected items. And now if we go back here to the shopping list itself, and then you see the Christmas stuff has been there for that recipe has been there. So you can just continue to add things to your recipe. Uh, now, it doesn't compare. Like if you have it in one list and it's also in another list, you're going to have to figure that one out yourself. Uh, but it at least gives you an idea of what to, what to shop for. Now, as I promised, we're going to back down here in the kitchen and we're going to go ahead and use the uh, laptop down here. So we're going to choose a recipe to work with. So we'll just choose any one here. Now, some recipes have this feature and some don't. Uh, but we'll use this one that we have uh, here on the screen. If you look down here, they'll have this little button down here that talks about enable hand-free use. And then on the top right, there's an indicator whether it's on or off. Right now, it's off. And when it turns green, uh, it's enabled. So ha hands-free is uh, able to be used now. What that means is that if you're in the kitchen and your hands are all filthy with chicken juices on them, things you don't want to touch, you don't want to contaminate your laptop, you can just use the recipe here by just swiping your hand across and change pages. Now, they're a little touchy. You have to get used to your camera and how it responds, but there. I just swipe my hand from right to left, and it went to the next page, which is the ingredients. And all I have to do if I want it ready for step one after I'm prepared is go to step two. Well... Uh, again, you have to play with it a little bit, but it gets to be pretty easy to use. You have to make sure you don't go too fast as well. So we're on step one, doing the stuff here, and I'm ready to go to the next step. There I go to step two. So as I mentioned, uh, you can go backwards, forwards, you can do anything you want, go to the next step, prepare some more stuff, 
and go. Now, again, if you go too fast, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So you'll get used to it after a while. There, it missed. But after, just like anything else, once you get used to it and you're sort of in tune with your uh, inner chi here, you can get this to work really nicely and you don't have to worry about it. The only thing you have to worry about is maybe your battery's running out right in the middle of a recipe. So uh, use this instead of a, a, a cookbook or a cook recipe card and you don't have to worry about messing up your laptop. So it's a great implementation of an old in the kitchen having a cookbook uh, there for you. So bring your laptop or your tablet down to the kitchen and find that recipe that you want to always want to try. And you can even prepare it with some uh, hands-free magic at the end. So enjoy the new food and drink application from Windows 8.1. And don't forget to subscribe to Old Guy Geek. We have over 100 Windows 8 and Windows Phone 8 videos. And we're publishing more all the time.